Today I'm taking one of the fastest bullet trains in the world, going from Tokyo to Kyoto in Japan. We're going to Kyoto! Kyoto! And it's around one hour before departure, and Bob is getting us our tickets using those vending machines over there. There you can choose your exact seat before getting your tickets. And we arrived at Tokyo Station pretty early because the station is almost as cool as the train. Taking the train here in Japan is not like taking the train anywhere else in the world. It's like a full-on experience in itself. I don't know, it's just like such a fun experience. Like it feels like you're going to some sort of theme park when you're here. So you do need a ticket to explore the station, and there's a lot of food options that are not available anywhere else in Japan and you cannot get them unless you're traveling today so I'm really really excited so while we're looking for the best food among the 150 restaurant options you can see that this train station is incredibly busy there's around 4,000 trains and half a million people departing each day so this is why it's pretty packed around us and looking at the map the station almost feels like a maze there's so many different floors a bunch of different Shinkansen going to many different places in Japan and I think the best thing to do is just walk around, get lost, and see what we find. But you're literally in like, I think the most populated station of Japan. There's so many different types of Shinkansen. And it, I think, makes great sense to people that do it all the time, but to people just here once in a while, it's, it's a little bit tough to understand. But the food in this station is unbelievable. I am lost, but I see a lot of food, so I'm happy about it. And lucky we just stumbled upon what we are looking for, which is this shop selling Ekiben. So this is a lunchbox that's made to be eaten in the train, and is only sold in train stations. It roughly translates to train station bento and it is a very very iconic Japanese train food. And looking at this shop they all seem super appetizing with a bunch of different options with really really cool packaging. And also what's super cool is a lot of these lunch boxes are only sold in specific train stations or regions. So going through all the options it all feels super special and almost exclusive. So we settled for this ekiben that's supposed to have foods from many different regions of Japan and this one that's really surprising and cool because it's self-heating. I don't really have an idea of the specifics, but I'm excited to try it too. We also grabbed a few drinks for the road, paid at the counter, and left with a ton of food to eat in the train. But we're also super hungry right now and we haven't eaten anything today, so we're gonna go to this vending machine soba restaurant. So what looks good? Hot soba with pork and rowing. Hot soba. Hot yeah. soba with pork topped with back fat. Yeah, I want that. Give me that back fat. <laughs> I'll get that too. Oh, okay. This is the nicest train station food I've ever seen. On my side, I have a hot soba noodle, which is a buckwheat noodle, with a raw egg, some pork, and topped with some cabbage. It looks absolutely amazing, and I am so hungry. Bobby's dish was called hot soba noodle with pork and back fat. Oh, that's right, back fat. Back fat, so yeah, I'm excited to try yours too. Yes. <laughs> I wonder what the back fat is. I am so hungry. Yeah, we came like early just to get the food, because some people don't even travel, they just use their ticket to get in and get the food. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, I've seen that on like all the blogs online, like people were like, even if you're not going anywhere, it's worth going to Tokyo <laughs> Station just for the food. Mm. This is so good, oh my god. That fat has never tasted so good. Oh wow, here I want to try yours. When we travel together with Bobby, we always share food. This way we can try two things in one mm -hmm. meal. Wow, the back fat thing looks amazing. <laughs> I really love this one. It's called back fat, so it's like really, really fatty. It's like super filling too. I think this is like the perfect food before a train. This just like hits the spot. The train station is unbelievable. It's a place that just doesn't exist anywhere outside of Japan. It's just a very unique energy. Tokyo Station is not just known for the restaurants, it's also known for the crazy good snacks. Oh my gosh, yeah. There's so many different yeah. places to get there's snacks. Many, yeah, there's so many different spots. And like, it was like quite confusing, like I still have not a lot of idea of where I am right now. <laughs> and we ended up in this kind of like massive market, mm -hmm. like with like so many different food options. The cool thing about it though is that like each vendor is like a street vendor. I like know. they're making like the food in front yes. of you and it's like quite complicated food. And then we ended up with this onigiri place. It looks so good. There were so many different choices. Everything was in Japanese. So we just ordered something that looked good and something that supposedly is tuna as well. Le let's get to it. Yeah. Let's see how it compares to the 7-Eleven mm -hmm. onigiris we had. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in the first video.
Mm. Right? Mm-hmm. It's crazy how much fresher this one is compared to 7-Eleven that already tasted super fresh. I think I have pretty low standard for onigiri because I already think the 7-Eleven ones are like so good. Mm -hmm. I loved trying them last time. But this is so fresh and I think the seaweed is so much fresher here. It tastes super good. Okay, what's the second one? So this is not tuna. Well, I thought it was tuna, and then I pointed at the other one, and she goes, tuna? And I'm like, oh, okay, so this one isn't tuna, so I don't know what this so is. So what is this not tuna onigiri? I don't know. I think it's some sort of, like, dried fish. It's really yeah. salty. Mm. Yeah, I think it tastes like fish eggs almost. Yeah, dried yeah, yeah. fish eggs. Mm -hmm. For me, I definitely prefer the tuna. But yeah, tuna one. is so good. But this was good, too. But this Super is, fresh. Yeah, this is yeah. a great snack. And it's now time to board our train. And I'm so excited because Japanese bullet trains are just one of the best training experience you can have. So going to our train, everything is super well indicated with so many unmissable signs in English showing us the way to our bullet train. And we're going all the way to track 18, where we can watch the many bullet trains of the Tokyo Kyoto line come and go. These trains have a distinctive big nose and they go so fast, so there's quite a few of us train watching, which makes for a pretty fun energy. And our train should arrive any minute now, so we're gonna wait in line and see one of my favorite things about Japanese trains and what to me makes them so good. So after the other passengers get down, the train is being serviced by these people wearing blue and pink uniforms. And they make sure everything is nice and clean. And most importantly, they turn the seats so that everyone is facing the way of travel. After they leave, we can finally get on the train. So let's find our seats, drop our bags in the overhead compartment and drink some refreshing green tea. I'm so thirsty after running around eating salty food in the station. Mm. I love this tea brand, mm -hmm. it's so good. And we should be leaving any minute now, so let me give you a quick seat tour. In this train, you can choose between two seats side by side like we did, or three seats side by side. The seats themselves are the cleanest I've ever seen on a train. And they are covered in blue fabric with some kind of nice white cloth headrest. Here you can find all the classic train amenities like an adjustable armrest, an outlet at ground level, a lot of legroom, and some storage space behind the seat in front of you. But there's also a lot of things here that remind me of a plane, like like the massive window with a blind, the AC that's in the ceiling, and also look at the way the seats are numbered. And we are finally leaving the station right on time, as expected. Japanese trains are one of the quietest places on earth, and I don't really want to disturb anyone, so I will try to be as silent as I can during this vlog. And a few minutes later, we make our first stop at Shinagawa, right outside of Tokyo. And people are once again waiting in line to get in the train, which I really enjoy and is way more relaxing than taking the train in Europe or the US. Here we have more people boarding the train, and we are on our way. Being so quiet, the Shinkansen is a great place to get some work done, and everyone is already typing away on their laptops. On my side, I'm planning to check out the views during the whole trip, which will only last 2 hours and 15 minutes since this train is so fast. And we quickly leave the Tokyo suburbs behind, and the views start getting really interesting as we're crossing smaller cities with a lot of rice fields and beautiful mountains in the background. And apparently on a good day, you can even see Mount Fuji. So let's see if the clouds clear up. We are already going 280 kilometers an hour, which is 174 miles an hour, which is really, really fast. It's because we're currently on the fastest bullet train of the line, which stops only at the biggest stations. And by the way, this line was the world's first bullet train line, which opened in 1964, which I find super cool. And now I want to eat the beautiful bento boxes we bought at the station. So let's start with this one, which has eight foods from various regions of Japan. Everything is explained in this little flyer over here and I believe Bobby's getting the beef patty with tomato from Fukushima first and looking at his face I think he's enjoying it. Next I'm going for the salmon from the north of Japan which is super delicious and marinated in miso. We then try the other options trying to share with the other which is not always easy. This ekeben is overall so delicious and it's so fun to get to try all the little dishes which all look so good and are so nicely presented. We then try the self-heating bento which comes with an instruction manual. And after pulling this long string out, the bento starts letting out a bunch of steam. And after a few minutes, everything is ready and we get to eat some kind of thinly sliced meat over rice. Which is pretty good and so fun to eat while watching the beautiful views over the Japanese countryside. And as you can see, there's a lot of clouds, so no views on Mount Fuji this time. We end our meal right on time for arrival to Kyoto, which is our final stop and the end of this video. So see you next time!